We're now at the awesome place where the network is actually live. And I want to give you a bit of an update as to how things have gone so far and how we see the ecosystem developing um, over the next uh, coming months and a year as well. And also share some new information about features that are going to be coming out quite soon as well. Right, let's start. So network has been live almost four weeks now. And in that space of four weeks, um, we've been actually quite impressed about the amount of activity we get on chain. Not all the applications are live yet. I believe I'll, I'll share some numbers about apps that are, are live. We still have a massive pipeline of 40 games that are coming onto the platform. And I believe another backlog of um, 60 to 70 as well. But our goal is to really grow and push these apps on chain with our partners as soon as possible. So in a short space of time, we've done about 12 and a half million transactions. Um, we have over, um, you know, we, we basically have over 15,000 active wallets on a day-to-day -day basis, but overall six, six, 662 active wallets in the entire system in a very short space of time as well. Um, one thing I do want to go over in terms of a network is in the sense of the cost of minting NFTs. Today, there are 1.4 million NFTs on SWE. The cost of minting a million NFTs on SWE is about $6,600. Now, if, you, if any of those um, NFTs get burnt, the, mint, the creator of those NFTs actually get what we call a storage rebate back. So realistically, if any of those NFTs get destroyed, the um, creator of NFT will receive about $3,600 back. So SWE is by far the cheapest network to create NFTs, to mint tokens, comparatively to Ethereum at 33 million, Solana at 253K, and then Polygon at $32,000. It is incredibly cheap to run applications on SWE. It's incredibly cheap to run NFT projects on SWE. Next thing we want to talk about SWE. What people don't really know is SWE is actually almost a pseudo um, deflationary token in the sense that every time you store something in SWE, every time you process a transaction, there's an amount of token that's locked away um, for storage purposes. So it takes tokens out of circulation. So we actually think the amount of circulation, although we say um, SWE has a total proposed value, um, proposed uh, amount of tokens of 10 billion tokens. What we actually find in reality is as more assets are stored on chain, more tokens are actually taken out of circulation. Um, so you can see over here, if I get out of the, if I get out of the picture, there's about 232,000 um, SWE that has gone into, uh, got out of the storage rebate. Um, 246 has gone in actual storage. And then basically that's about 46,000 SWE that's been taken out of circulation in the space of about three weeks, and you see that continually cycle. And as more apps come onto the network and there's more volume, you see more and more SWE go out of circulation as a result as well. But overall, in that space of time as well, we've seen the cost of processing transactions on SWE go down. As we mentioned, SWE is the only network by which the cost of transactions actually stays constant from a dollar perspective. So right now, what we're seeing is price discovery amongst validators of what the true cost of transaction is. Once, you f once um, the, the price stabilizes for validators, what you see is if SWE goes up in price, the cost of transactions will go down in terms of SWE, but will be flat dollar-wise. So if you're a game builder, it's g a great news for you. It means today, if it costs one cent to mint an NFT, next week it'll still cost a cent to mint an NFT, irrespective of the SWE price. So the ecosystem is coming along nicely. I mean, as I mentioned, like we'll caveat, we've only been live for four weeks and in that space of time, six titles have launched, and I believe there'll be two or three titles launching every week for the next six months or something like that. There are four DeFi applications live. There's at least eight in the, wait, in the waiting list go, uh, waiting to go live right now. Five NFT marketplaces, 17 collections with at least 10,000 mints. We have one bridge and one name service, and I believe there are two bridges, Axlar um, um, waited to go live and also Layer Zero. Um, we have three live explorers, 10 wallets, two on ramps, 13 plus RPC providers, it is insane. I think we're very, very excited about the amount of engagement we're seeing. We're very excited about the growth of the ecosystem in its nascent state. But more importantly, um, people are excited. People want to launch really cool applications that just don't exist anywhere else. Um, luck, thanks to the Indexer crew. Um, you've seen that in day one, that's the amount of NFTs we had in the ecosystem, about 21,000. Um, do dollars worth. And then today, that value is going up to 3.7 million. And again, you're, if you just entered the SWE ecosystem, it's early. You're still very early. And I think you're seeing more application, more um, projects launch, more projects build value over time. And I think 
more participation, more active wallets um, over time as well. So very excited about these stats and I would love to talk about it again this time next year. So what is coming soon to SWE? I want to talk about deep book liquidity integration. We, we, we shared with you that the goal for deep book is not just to have some order book on chain. It is a shared project across multiple, um, um, multiple builders that is a trading venue. So if, if, like it were, it's comparative to a, a Binance or CME. It is a high performance um, central limit order book for SWE. And it's built by multiple protocol builders and contributors in our ecosystem. Um, oracles, more oracles are going to start pushing prices to SWE on a regular basis at high volume. So you actually see the TPS start to shoot up as oracles start to pump regular prices on SWE on a, on a higher cadence. And liquid staking is also going to be enabled um, shortly as well. I think there's a SIP going into, um, that's been approved as we speak, that is going to enable the, the ability to actually have liquid staking on SWE. So DBook, it is a native central limit order book um, on SWE that has become the foundation that many DeFi protocols are going to actually build liquidity across the, across the um, pools as well. Um, right now, there are at least seven contributors to the DeepBook um, um, protocol on SWE. And over time, I believe there'll be more people added. I believe the Discord, the Telegram channel is actually larger than this number that's shown on here right now. So more protocols, if you want to add features to it, if you want to build new things, submit a SIP, um, write some code and submit it to the crew. And we'll, um, you, you, you go through the normal pr um, process of getting um, consensus amongst the team. But it's the, 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 sometime next week, by Thursday, I believe, we'll have a soft launch of the deep book in the sense that there'll be the first set of market makers start to make markets directly on deep book. And there's a ton of liquidity that is scheduled to go onto deep book once it's fully live um, in the month of June, this month that we're live. By the end of the month, we expect the deep book liquidity to be way above 50 million T, um, T, um, T, TPV. Um, the ecosystem it says, is, is growing. Um, there are over 200 applications that listed to go live. And I believe we're not even there yet. I think only a fraction of those are live now. Many are going through audits. There's a massive backlog with auditors at, at the moment in time. Many are still testing their code, running through DevNet, um, running through TestNet. And the ecosystem and, and SWE is rapidly growing. And I want to kind of highlight again reasons why we're super excited about what we're building on SWE in terms of gaming. Yeah. <laughs> So overall, we believe SWE is going to be the home for Web3 gaming. We've built a ton of really cool features that not only give you high la um, low latency, low cost, the ability to actually store real images on chain at very low cost rather than using a different um, service provider. We, we believe it's going to create new opportunities to create wonderful new dynamic NFTs that actually create more engagement on chain. I, we don't believe that blockchain makes sense if it doesn't improve engagement, retention, conversion for game builders. Otherwise, why use a blockchain? We think SWE is going to offer those features for game builders for the first time in Web3. I want to talk about something we're very excited that's fresh off the press that is called Actions, the Actions Primitive in SWE. Now, what we believe is, is critical to ensuring that you can have full engagement on SWE and actually have marketing that 
tailors to actual usage is the ability to track what people are doing, right? In a way that's decentralized and actually fully engaging. What actions enable people to do is actually to do cross promotions. For example, let's say I've built a DeFi protocol and I've also have a lending protocol. One is a DEX, one is a lending borrow pro um, protocol, one is something else to do with actual yield um, optimization. You can actually create primitives that enable you to say, if I stake X amount for 30 days while also providing liquidity in another pool, while also optimizing yield, I'm going to give you a sweet token, I'm going to give you an NFT, I'm going to give you something else related. Now imagine if you do that for gaming to say, if you play five RPGs, but if you also reach the top level in three of them, right? Or you've actually mastered a particular level or gained a, f a particular character, you'll be able to be the first hundred users will be able to receive some form of award. Now, this can be done on chain directly where anyone can provide some capital on chain and set the rules that they want to be met. And contracts can engage directly with that asset over time to start to build real engagement on chain. So it means gamers get the benefit of being able to grow their user base um, while using the chain as a form of verification and do that completely autonom autonomously. DeFi protocols that can engage with games to actually drive traffic. But more importantly, we think it's going to create new opportunities for actual deeper liquidity across the chain as well. So look out for that. It's going to be in testnet very, very soon. I would believe the first version of this will be in mainnet this sometime this month. Through the month of summer, we're going to be running a ton of fun and interesting campaigns using this primitive for games, for DeFi, for all forms of even digital commerce as well. So very excited about this feature. Second thing I want to talk about is ZK Login. We shared about ZK Login a while back, and I want to talk about it because I think it might go over people's head to think it's something very basic. Um, today in Web3, I've been in the Web3 space since 2000, late 2011, early 2012. So I like to call myself a degen. But in reality, we're a very small number. Uh, I mean, we're like 0.00001% of the world, right? The general user doesn't care, doesn't want to know anything about private keys, doesn't want to know anything about ledger, is uninterested. In fact, if you ask them to play a game and you put them these massive roadblocks in front of them before playing a game, there'll be no interest. How do they know this value up front? So what we've built is a primitive called ZK Login. What that means is if you have a normal Google account, a Facebook account, any account that supports OpenID, you can verify, you can basically create a wallet with just that account alone. Now, the difference is, it sounds like you might have heard that before with Web3 Auth and things like that. The very difference here is that there is no middleman in this process. You simply, using the SDK, are generating a zero-knowledge cookie for your account. You're submitting that zero-knowledge cookie on-chain, um, exposing no private information about yourself, and it's the chain that verifies your login. There's no middle company required to actually do that, which means every app in the Sui ecosystem, if you log in with a Google account, you have exactly the same account on, on that particular wallet moving forward. Very excited about this feature. We think it's going to actually make it possible to bring in the next billion users. It means now anybody can have a Web3 account without knowing it or even thinking that it's Web3. It's just an extension of the existing identities that exist today. Um, separately to that, we think the fact that it's fully, it's, it's something that you already know as a user to be your own account that you're used to using, it means you can now receive NFTs via email. Someone can drop an NFT in your email, someone can actually send an NFT on chain to you by email and you can redeem it, only you can redeem it. We think discovery is actually going to be easier as a result. Now, you marry Z um, ZK login with um, the ability to do what we call sponsored transactions. It means users don't know gas exists. Users don't even know a private key exists. Now it means every user can gain access to the Sui ecosystem. Now this is high level how it works. It's very simplistic in nature from a user perspective, which is a design. You, when you're creating a wallet, just click your Google account, you click on sign in. Um, once you've signed in, you click on create account and you're in. You have an account immediately. You don't know anything different as a user. Now, with Web3 Auth, you're thinking, oh, there's another service provider I need to go to. You have to sign a contract. There's a, there's a monthly fee or whatever it's related. Here, there's nothing. It's just your Google account. The same would work for Twitch. Very important for gaming. So we'll support Google and Twitch from day one. And if you have a Twitch account, you have a Google account, you have any account, including Facebook, you'd be able to simply create an account right out the bat with any wallet in the Sui ecosystem. Now, it's not unique to Sui wallet only. Any wallet in the Sui ecosystem with the same um, Google account or the same Facebook account will have the same level of access moving forward. 
um, shifting forward. I would talk about the zero knowledge process that's going on in the background, but it's probably not necessary, but happy to share these slides with anyone who's interested. So SWE is a very different ecosystem. It's not the same story we've heard over and over again. It's fast. It's got low, high TPS, low, you know, low latency and all that stuff. We've heard it over and over again. What matters is what can you build with the blockchain? What does it enable you to do? And we believe we're building a very differentiated, very highly skilled, um, very intrinsic ecosystem for those who want to do really interesting things from a gaming perspective, from a DeFi perspective, and from a commerce perspective. Just look at the primitives. We have the kiosk standard, which is being used as a way for you to have a, 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 a liquidity hub for your NFTs or even have a, a very easy way for you to list your NFT yourself. We have DeepBook, which is a central limit order book directly on chain that's high performance. That is not being seen as just a traditional club, but it's seen as a prime trading venue. We have ZK Login, the ability to actually first time really bring in the billion people into Web3 without thinking it's Web3. It just feels like Web2. We have the action premises, the ability to do Web3 marketing on chain in a decentralized way. We have Sui Move, which is an object-based pro program model for anyone who already knows how to do C Sharp, C++, um, any kind of object-oriented language. You feel at home with Sui Move very, very quickly. Um, very different from Move in itself. And then we have obvious, obfuscated NFTs or private NFTs. We have the ability to allow you to create NFTs that only the owner can see some element of the attribute of that NFT. So the general public might just see a lower res picture, but when you receive the NFT, you will see the higher res picture. Now imagine also being able to do things like blinding. So on your birthday, you'll be able to see a particular field of an NFT, whereas no one else will be able to see it also. We think new forms of engagement, new forms of gaming will actually be possible on Sui unlike other chains that exist today. Now, in talking about the tsunami, this is what we call it, it's growing, right? It's not small. It's, we're working with some of the largest companies in the world, working with some of the highest skilled builders in the world, and we also work with some amazing DGENs to build a very cohesive ecosystem. Uh, and some of you might already know, we announced that we are now the official um, partner, blockchain partner for Red Bull Racing. This is not just some logo on a car that everyone tries to do. This is something very meaningful. Namely, we can bring real engaging experiences for the first time to millions of fans around the world for, for Formula One. Separately from that, we want to talk about Gumi. We partnered with Gumi. We're going to be working with Gumi on a number of initiatives, including gaming, node operations. They're going to be working on... Gumi is a publicly traded company uh, in, in Japan. The same thing with GRI, a publicly traded company in Japan. In Korea here, we're working with Netmarble and NCSoft, some of the biggest gaming companies in the world. So the biggest builders in the world are coming to SWE to build their games, AAA all the way to independence as well. So we think SWE is going to be the home for new experiences, and we're very excited, and we can't wait to have you also join the party as well. Now, that's all I have time for today. I'm happy to also answer any questions that you may have. It's a lot that we've gone through in a very short space of time. Thanks very much. Thank <laughs> you.